In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom, and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This reading is from the last of four passages in Isaiah that are often called servant songs. Christians are probably most familiar with this servant song. In light of Christian faith, the servant's healing ministry and redemptive suffering are understood to be fulfilled in the life and death of Christ. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 53, beginning at the fourth verse. 
Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we, are, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. We all, we, all, we like sheep, have gone astray. We, all, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish we shall see light. We shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Using imagery from scripture and from Jewish worship practices, Jesus is presented as the great high priest who was obedient to God's saving plan. Through his suffering and death, he has become the source of eternal salvation. The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I baptize with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, 
but it is those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants, tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Clarence Jordan was a man of unusual abilities and commitment. He had two PhDs, one in agriculture and one in Greek and Hebrew. So gifted was he, he could have chosen to do anything he wanted. He chose to serve the poor. In the 1940s, he founded a farm in Americus, Georgia, and called it Koinia Farm. It was a community for poor whites and poor blacks. And as you might agree, as you might guess, such an idea did not go over well in the deep south of the 40s. Ironically, much of the resistance came from good church people who followed the laws of segregation as much as other folk in town. And the town people tried everything to stop Clarence. They tried boycotting him and slashing workers' tires when they came to town. Over and over, for 14 years, they tried to stop him. Finally, in 1954, the Ku Klux Klan had enough of Clarence Jordan, so they decided to get rid of him once and for all. They came one night with guns and torches and set fire to every building on Koinia Farm but Clarence's home, which they riddled with bullets. And they chased off all the families except one black family which refused to leave. Clarence recognized the voices of many of the Klansmen, and as you might guess, some of them were church people, and another was the local newspaper's reporter. And the next day, the reporter came out to see what remained of the farm. The rubble still smoldered, and the land was scorched. But he found Clarence in the field, hoeing and planting. I heard the awful news, he called to Clarence, and I came out to do a story on the tragedy of your farm closing. Clarence just kept on hoeing and planting. And the reporter kept prodding, kept poking, trying to get a rise from this quietly determined man who seemed to be planting instead of packing his bags. So finally, the reporter said in a haughty voice, well, Dr. Jordan, you got two of them PhDs, and you've but for 14 years into this farm, and there's nothing left of it at all. Just how success successful do you think you've been? Clarence stopped hoeing, turned toward the reporter with his penetrating blue eyes, and said quietly but firmly, about as successful as the cross. Sir, I don't think you understand us. What we are about is not success, but faithfulness. We're staying. Good day. Beginning that day, Clarence and his companions rebuilt Koinia, and the farm is going strong still today. For a life of, faithful, of faith is about faithfulness, not about success. This is a lesson James and John learn in today's gospel. They are worried about it and ask Jesus for a place of honor in heaven, his right and his left. At least in the gospel of Matthew, their mother is the one worried about finding a good place for her sons. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your kingdom. What more important spot can be had than sitting right next to Jesus for all eternity? Now, when the rest of the disciples hear about this, they are not happy. Not because they didn't think it was important, but most likely because they didn't think to ask first. 
It's kind of like a group of siblings calling dibs on the front seat of the car. These disciples have been fighting amongst themselves about who is the greatest disciple. They want the power and prestige of being with Jesus. And this isn't so different from what we want. We want success. We want to be served. We get mad when others get ahead of us or get something we deserve. And we truly don't want to sacrifice for another human being. We want to be on the top. By nature, we are selfless, just like James and John. And it comes out everywhere. In our politics, in our driving, in our offices, even amongst churches, there is competition instead of camaraderie. Honestly, it is sinful. We are guilty of it. And our desire is to be served rather than to serve. And we cannot help but think, what is in this for me? Or what reward will I get? Jesus isn't surprised by our thoughts and desires, just as he was not surprised by James and John's questions. He doesn't yell at them, call them Satan like he did Peter. He is pretty gentle, instructing them that they are unaware of what they are actually asking for. He invites them to see what they truly are asking, to drink his cup and join in his baptism. That is, to be joined in the suffering and death which is to come. But James and John still don't seem to get it, and they agree that they can. And in some respects, they do, because eventually James was martyred by King Herod, while John lived another 60-plus years. But toward the end of his life, John was exiled for clinging to the true faith. In this way, they both drank of the cup of suffering and death but they weren't able to do it on behalf of the world. So Jesus puts an end to all the bickering between the disciples. He says, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. This is just how the world works, and we aren't going to change the world immediately. But this is not how the disciples are supposed to act. And it's not how we are supposed to act either. Not in our politics, not in our driving, not in our offices, or even amongst our churches. It is not about how successful we are, but how faithful we are to God. We are called to look out for everyone, to serve everyone. Jesus teaches service, sacrificing for others. And like James and John, we seem to have forgotten that faith isn't about success, our team's success, or even our church's success. It is about service. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's what he did. Jesus left his throne in heaven, came to earth, taught, healed, and loved God's people. And for his service, he was betrayed, condemned, mocked, flogged, and crucified. And as we follow in his footsteps, we can expect the same things be said of us. Even our entire farms may be burned to the ground, just like Dr. Jordan's. Are we really willing to give up everything by being faithful to God? Sadly, I don't think we are, but we should be. We are called by God to serve each other with humility and love, just as Jesus has served us with humility and love. Success isn't about how many people who are below you, but how you serve others. Let us work to find joy in serving others, faithfully following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Amen.
set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the Church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms, and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating One, for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Suffering One, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful One, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, especially for those we name aloud or in our hearts. May they all find healing in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining one, for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage them as they serve with a generous heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Risen one, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we all are gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to you. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God. For by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.